Welcome to JWest Engineering. Today I'm going to give you a detailed look at the Porsche 911 shift linkage. Uh, this applies to the 911s with the 901 and 915 gearboxes. Uh, much of this information transfers over to the 914. Some of the little tips and tricks. Uh, there are different locations on the 914 linkages, but they they kind of work the same. So first, we'll start off with uh, showing you kind of a mock-up of the full shift linkage attached to a wrench shift shifter, of course. Uh, this is a shortened shift rod I use in, in my test rig. But we've got the, the shifter, the uh, cup that goes up underneath it, and then the shift rod which rides in a rod bushing and the factory rod bracket going back to where it, it, yours will be a lot longer, uh, about three times longer. But right in front of the back seats underneath the uh, a little cover in the center tunnel is the shift coupler and a clamp here attaches and this is our JOS engineering version which has uh, just a bolt instead of a nut and a bolt which makes it much easier to perform the shift linkage adjustment and now we'll tear into each each part here so when you buy your end shift the ball cut bushing comes pre-installed and that's the the first part of the linkage that if you're if you're just doing a rebuild of your factory shifter and linkage you'll definitely want to replace this guy um, they're a little bit tough to to get off and install what I do is use a pair of slip joint uh, water top pipe pump type pliers grab it like this and lever it off and to put the new one on I set the bushing down on the table put some lithium or silicone grease inside of it shut the shifter down on it and push down like that and it'll pop into the, uh, the bushing. Next we get to the, the cup that that bushing fits into. And when you take the shifter up and out of the tunnel, you're going to see the cup sitting there and this bracket is up on top of the, the rear of the hole. And you may be wondering, how in the world do I get that cut off in order to replace this bushing? So I'll show you that. Here's a cutoff shifter rod and the, uh, the cup separated. So what it has is this Allen screw. It's called a cone screw for obvious reasons when you look at it. And these guys fit together and lock down. This will be on the driver's side. Uh, got to make sure I don't alienate our people from across the pond with right-hand drive cars. It's on, on the left-hand side of the car, facing sideways. And so if you had never seen that before, it might be hard to find because it's tucked down in there when it screws in all the way. So you take out that screw, a couple slide off, may take a little bit of persuasion. And then once that's out of the way, you'll be able to slide the shift rod bushing out and up out of the tunnel. So this is the shift rod bushing holder with the shift rod bushing in it. Uh, when you when you buy a ran shift, I include the, the cut bushing, but I don't include this bushing or any other parts of the linkage because what I found is most customers will have gone through a linkage rebuild first. So they have all the new bushings and then they decide they still don't like how it shifts and they'll put the wrench shift in. So rather than charging for these parts, I'll, uh, I, I leave those out and I offer them separately. I actually have a package deal that includes this bushing and either bushings for the shift coupler or replacement coupler um, and our clamp as a package. So if you're interested in rebuilding your whole shift, shifter linkage and shifter from the beginning with a REN shift, then you can buy that package. Um, when it comes to this bushing, there are actually two different types depending on the year of your car and what's been changed around. The factory changeover was in 1968. Um, many have been changed, uh, the, the rod brackets. So you're never sure what exactly you have, but I'll show you the variations here. So we've got the early type, 
looks like this. We've got the uh, part number here. It's a 901-424-29100. And for that one, the difference is the groove here that it fits into. And so this one's about five and a half millimeters. The later one, 69 and later, the groove is about nine millimeters. That later one, the 69 and later, goes all the way up to 86, 911s. And that one actually has a 914 part number, 914-424-22400. And the reason it has a 914 part number is it was also used in the 914 as a uh, firewall bushing. And, you know, so I don't, I don't know why that's the one that everybody decided to use from then on for all time, but it's not a 914 specific part. It will fit your 911. The uh, best way to replace this bushing is to heat up a cup of water. Just heat up, heat up some water in the microwave and drop the bushing into it. If you try to heat it directly, there's a good chance you'll melt it. But if you do it that way, you won't get it too hard, hard and you'll too hot so it'll melt. Um, but it will soften it to make it a little easier to press in. Um, I use a hydraulic press and, and a cup and a, a round flat die to press them in, but you can do it with a vise with a couple of sockets. Um, and just for fitment, so you can understand how this works, the, the uh, bracket sits up on top of the floor. The rear hole here matches the rear hole that holds the shifter to the floor, and then there's two bolts there that screw into these welded on nuts that are in the bracket. And so that is recessed into a groove in the, that's machined on the bottom of the shifter and sits like that. So it becomes basically part of the shifter assembly and sandwiched between the shifter and the floor. Okay, moving on down the line, we get to the area in front of the back seats under the hatch where the shift coupler is. We have the shift coupler clamp. And I mentioned earlier, this is the J West version. Here's the factory version, the stamped steel, has a nut and a bolt. These tend to become pretty deformed. And when you're doing your shift, adjust, shift uh, coupler adjustment or your alignment between your shifter and your transmission, you have to get inside of that tunnel with two wrenches or a wrench and a, and a ratchet and socket and then try to hold the coupler and the shift linkage and it just becomes a dance trying to hold all those things. Our uh, machined aluminum clamp just has one bolt threaded right in so it makes it much easier to do that adjustment because you just have one wrench tighten it down done. Okay move back a little bit further and we have the shift coupler. Now this is a factory shift coupler. Um, it has the factory bushings installed in it, which have a slight bit of slop to them. They're D-shaped, and that's not where from time that is actually how they are delivered. Um, I really don't like that. I like it to be tight. Uh, I have no, no use for adding extra slop into the, into the linkage. There are places where there are clearances in the linkage already, and so I don't feel that that's necessary or desirable. Um, you'll see this is a little bit later coupler. It has the, the radial knurlings. Um, some of the earlier couplers, or most of the earlier couplers, and uh, some of the aftermarket ones have these uh, parallel knurlings. And a lot of people will think these are splines, but this is actually a smooth bore inside of the shift linkage, inside of that tube. And so there are, there are no splines. You can't move it over by one spline except for visually. Um, just wanted to, to make, that, make that clear. So if we don't like the shift couplers with the slot in them, what are we to do? Well, these are the aftermarket bushings that that I sell. Uh, they're available from lots of sources. 
Uh, now, some people have checked these out and taken taken their coupler apart and put the the uh, rod in there and said, "Oh, these are these are junk." They there's and there's lots of different manufacturers of these, but they're oversized. They don't work. Look at all the slop it provides. Well, these are actually a a somewhat soft urethane material. When you put it inside the coupler and squish it down, it actually makes the hole smaller. It's, here's the same bushing installed inside of the coupler. And you can see it's a very tight fit. So works out fine once the whole thing's actually assembled. So when I was first working on these, uh, the first time I saw one of these couplers, I think I was probably about 16 years old. Uh, Believe it or not, I'd been working on cars for quite a while at that point, and I was just con totally confused about how you get this apart. There were no set screws, there was no pen, had no idea how this came apart. And eventually, I got brave and just pounded on it, and it came apart. But what it has is a press fit pen that has two staking marks in the center. Actually, this one has three. Uh, it's, it's been staked right there, which makes the metal come proud of the surface on each side and provides tension right in the middle. So all you do is bang it out. The trick here is to not destroy the aluminum cage, this part. If you look, this floats in there, and often if you're rebuilding your original one, those bushings are completely crumbled. If you were to set this up and try to bang on it, it would just fall inside on this side and end up cracking the coupler right across there, the cage. So what you need to do, what I found the best way to do it is actually put the steel part into a vise and support this portion of it, let the cage hang free, and then take a drift and knock this pin out while supporting only this portion, only this pen portion of it. And then you won't be putting any load on the aluminum cage and you won't, you won't break the aluminum cage. Once you've separated it and gotten that apart, take your new bushing and it just pushes into here and it's a little bit of a struggle to compress it down. You'll probably start at the bottom like that, the back side and kind of work your way in, maybe take a screwdriver and tuck it a little bit. And you, you force them out and end up with both of your bushings in like that. And you put the, the center pen in. Push, start pushing your pen in there, and the same thing goes the other way. Although it's not quite as risky when it's fully supported by the bushing to support the cage, I still would prefer to hold it by the steel pin and drive the pin through that. So that's one option to rebuild your coupler is to put the new urethane bushings in it, have a nice tight coupler with no slop. But if you really want, if you don't want to mess with that, if you don't want to deal with rebuilding your old nasty part, then the ultimate is the Stomsky coupler. So this one is a, what's known as a helicopter joint. It's a, a universal joint metal to metal, and uh, comes with a nice new cone screw with a locking patch on it, nylon locking patch, ready to go. Clean, perfect, doesn't cause any binding in any direction, and this is the ultimate way to go. You can get, if you get our uh, package deal with the shifter, you can get it your choice of ways. You can get it with a pair of these bushings, for the coupler, rebuild your own, or you can have the Snobsky coupler included. And so there's a look at the shift linkage on a, on a 911, all the different parts, and how to upgrade it and get it into uh, perfect working condition to be fully compatible with your own shift.